Hi, welcome to the One Liter Podcast. You will watch us drinking one liters of beer whilst talking about shies. Please like and subscribe. Welcome to the Von Liter. Prost. Prost. Ah. Podcast with a view. And what a view at that. Mm. Speaking of views, so what I wanted to say to begin this podcast off is, with is I think I think there's some kind of weird universal <clears throat> causal effect like a black hole pulling energy and matter that for some reason the most beautiful women in the world seem to congregate around airports. Airports? The most beautiful women I personally have ever seen physically, not just like in a picture or a movie or whatever, uh, physically in the flesh have been at airports. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. I would agree. What is that? What causes that, do you think? Do you think that beautiful women just love to travel? Bingo. Bingo. Interesting. And like beautiful women have have uh, wealthy men after them who would take them on holidays so they're there, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe they're, they're, <laughs> they're flying to Saudi Arabia. I yeah. <laughs> I, th- I thought for sure with your experience with traveling, Phil, that you would have been like, yeah, I get that. I've never explicitly noticed. I noticed that when you see a beautiful woman at an airport, at an international airport especially, they'll always be dressed in their comfies. So you'll get like the sweatpants and the Big booty. hoodie. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you can tell. You can tell. Oh, you can absolutely, tell. you can tell. It's the same. It's the same way you could tell if if a guy's jacked and huge while he's wearing a loose t-shirt. You know, you can see that shit hanging off his chest. It's true. She's wearing loose stuff. You're like, I know what's under that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I've seen a couple of Asian women recently. I saw one at the airport yesterday when I was waiting for Sean to fly in. From behind, <clears throat> you can always tell. Like sometimes you'll see a chick from behind, you'll think she's a whitey, but she might be an Asian girl. You think she's a whitey, but but for the most part, <laughs> for the most this part, you can, racial terms, whitey. For the most part, you can tell if it's an Asian by their hair and the kind of yeah. shape and oh, contours. Hundred yeah. percent hair. But this chick, I was like, oh, she's got to be like Mexican or I don't know, Mexican but South Latino, because her booty was huge. And then she and then she went and got her luggage. This is way before you rocked up. Yeah. And then she turned and we made eye contact, and she was like Cambodian or Filipino or one Real. of those. One of those, you know. Mm, mm, chukaka, mm, chukaka, kinda. Hey, what 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 are your thoughts on? Oh, sorry, Sean, we, we, did you want to get no, continue no, no, on no, that you, because you summed it up pretty well. I was just going to say sometimes you can't tell, like that's like when you think you, can't. you know, you can't. And this this is where I was going to go with this. Do you think in the long term future of humanity, let's talk like next ten thousand years? Oh, we'll all be one color, yeah. Yeah. Do you think we'll all just morph into one race? Because it'll either be that. Because travel will be so easy and blah, 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 and then you won't distinguish each other. Do you think there'll be a singular race and even potentially a singular language? Because, like, internet language <laughs> is morphing. Like, Germans use a lot of English terms because it's yeah. American TV, whatever. And then on the flip side, it could either go the other way where things like extremes like the movies they do about future with like divided um what do they call them segregated races. segregated not not races but like classes so for instance like in hunger games that kind of shit so it could either be we divide real hard or everyone just morphs. Oh, you're not thinking of hunger yeah. games you're thinking of um red rising i've just started reading that no it's uh, listening to the audio d- d- division or it's the one with um, Shailene Woodley. It's like some people are good at debate, some people are good at war, some people oh, are good at yeah. gardening. Like, is that is it that movie you're thinking of? No, Divergent. Divergent. That that was, was, I don't was, know if I've seen that. That was a lit movie, dude. I was thinking more like either Hunger Games, but that's more like wealth, isn't it? And same with um, In Time. You know, the Justin Timberlake one where they yeah, got yeah, the yeah. rest of their time on their arm. And everyone's got a class, yeah. yeah. Here's jump, an interesting thing. Oh, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, I'll jump in on that one because I, I actually was thinking about that the other day. And I was like, so I'd done a Southeast Asia trip like last time we spoke. And when I was in Indonesia, um, that's mainly a like homogenous country. Is, is that how you 
Is homogenized. that the word? Homogenized country. Basically, it's like one kind of race, one mm. ethnicity, mm. Um, what have you. I thought to myself, like, if they continue it like that compared to, like, say, like a multicultural country like Australia, I can't ever see it seeing it go like that, you know? Exactly. That's exactly what I thought because the more, the most I've seen that is actually America, not so much Australia. Like America, when I went over there once by myself, especially Hawaii, I don't know if it's more concentrated in Hawaii because people move there from all over the world just to live a a luxe lifestyle by the beach and da, da, da. Yep. But there, I met a bunch of, I met a big group of people when I went out one night and they were all, all out for a birthday and they were all like really multicultural couples. Like, extreme and i was like you don't see that in australia that much do you know what yeah to to go off what you're saying what what would be an interesting observation is if <clears throat> not only would we evolve by skin color and dialect but maybe something else like high <coughs> higher um oh look it's clearing up it's beautiful outside it's beautiful higher um if we're if we have higher um like these like like Cambodia, for example, did you mention – what country did you mention? Indonesia. Indonesia. So Indonesians, obviously, are, they're a lot more organic and they're, they're not as um, first world as us. Mm. So we have – we have um, we're closer to things like radiation and, and other things. So it's possible that we would maybe evolve as well. So mm. would it be much like the Homo sapiens – being on the same, existing on the same planes as the Neanderthal. And the Neanderthals were bigger than us and apparently pretty intelligent too. And we killed them off. So would it be a matter of, um, would it be a matter of, uh, we've evolved to the point where it's just like, oh, we're, we're above you, sub other mm, humans, you know, yeah. and then we, we kill them off. Where the something. smarter ones become smarter. And, but then, then I think the uh, counter argument to that is, do you think that violence and killing off other races or other intelligence or whatever we have, the ones that haven't involved the same, would it become that or Ooh. the smarter we get, would we realize that we shouldn't just kill each other off? Because I feel like this is the argument made with like super intelligence as well. If you've got super intelligence or super intelligent AI, the fear is obviously AI sees how dumb humans are and we're just killing each other and burning resources and it goes, well, these guys are hurting the planet and the planet's what keeps me alive so I'll get rid of humans. That's right. That's like the fear. But at the same time, if something becomes super intelligent and it's super smart, it should actually be better at resolving conflict rather than just resorting to violence and killing things. Depends on the state of humanity. Well, yeah. Like, I mean, it depends on how much greed there is, how much mm -hmm. people want power, but... If the more intelligent people come to power, is that still going to be the case? I yeah, definitely. But you, you I feel only... like greed is not a very intelligent emotion, in my eyes. No, <laughs> so... <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's it's possible that um, it's possible that that maybe the the smarter we're smarter and we can see. Okay, well, we need to nurture these people and bring them up to scratch. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe if they resist, then we'll have no point, no choice, maybe kind of thing, or we'll at least try to intern them in some kind of camp. But yeah. then what we <laughs> next minute, I know, yeah, exactly. But what, Working camps. <laughs> what we what we deem as the greater good to them might be absolute um, tyranny and fascism. So it's exactly it's, there's always other opinions of how people want to live, right? And if, if you try to yeah. force your own way of living onto others, they might be like, but I just. I want to live in a tent and be one with nature. And people are like, no, you're wrong. You need to live in a fancy house. We're yeah. going to supply it for you and they're not going to be happy doing that. There's no exactly. one right way. You know what I mean? Exactly. What happens if we... But hey, if we were smarter, we'd know that. That's where AI comes in, my man. <laughs> what, happens <laughs> if, Skynet. what happens if we build a giant dome around Indonesia and said, we're going to let you do your own thing, but then they watch us, even if, even if the world's becoming a better place, we might be doing certain things that might offend them like we might be but here's, um, here's where so my thing is like whether or not we're doing right by them they still may see us as an evil and try to attack us so it's like there's but a million circumstances it, it, here's where i see a flaw in that um in that theory of trajectory why is why are we building a dome around indonesia and why are they letting us do it of course there's going to be animosity and they're going to be like fuck you guys why are you guys isolating us yeah well, Can't be done. It, yeah, well, uh, it yeah. needs to be like we become so intelligent 
that we go, okay, let's stop being stupid and greedy and we will just share the earth's resources rather than being like, no, we own these resources. These are our borders. You can't come in here. It's still like all of war is still so fucking silly and territorial and about money and resources and bullshit. Yep. Everyone gets so caught up in race, but where there is only really one human race, there's just different, different, you know, melanin and all that stuff. But um, I mean, it, there is obviously distinct differences in terms of culture, the way we've been brought up. So there's always going to be differences. If you meet someone that grew up in a completely different culture, it doesn't matter if they're a different color to you. If they're exactly the same color, you take two, let's say in my case, if you took two German born people and you sent one to China to grow up and you sent another one to Australia to grow up, they meet at the age of 40. They're going to be completely different people. That's right. It's kind of like almost like a nation is like software and you just download that software into whichever race it is, right? I, I can't I, love I can't, that, I, can't Sean. I can't claim that one. I think that was um one of the Weinsteins on the Modern Wisdom podcast. Anyway, I'll, I'll go How to, good's Modern I'll, Wisdom podcast? Oh, so Shout good. out to Chris. Shout Damn. out to Chris. Though, so I'll, I'll pose a question. Mm-hmm. Could you see, would you like a country where, so as it is now, you know, you go to England, you'll see white people, the queen, what have you. you she know, dead, bro. Oh, <laughs> you had seen the queen. Oh, she's on some <laughs> coins or something, you know. Um, you go to China, you see the Great Wall of China. Uh, with Asian people and stuff like that. As time goes on and we start mixing and the lines getting blurred, would you still want a country where you could go there and just have the people, the original people, experience the culture? Or would you want a country where it's it's mixed in, it's all kind of blended and blurred into different colours? Like how would you... That's a great question because I feel like that is part of the fun of travelling, putting yourself in someone else's culture and being like, wow, this is so different. Everyone lives differently differently. That's why we like doing it, right? And that's why people migrate to our country because they're like, I want to live in Australia because it's a nice way of living and blah, blah, blah. So I feel like it takes away a lot of that. But it depends on how long in the future we're talking because if it's a long, long time and everything merges like we were theoretically saying it could, then there would be no lesser way of living in people's eyes. So it would be like you basically just choose a place for its natural surroundings. So like you would come to Australia for the climate, which already happens for the climate and the beaches. And I feel like that may be one thing that will always separate people into classes, for instance, the environment, because supply and demand. People are going to want to live near the beach, so that's demand. So th- shit's going to be expensive. No matter how you try and govern it, it's going to be like, well, we can't we can't have everyone live here. So everyone wants to live here so people can charge more for their houses. It's going to happen automatically. Yeah. Like Sydney's going to become expensive because you've got, I don't even know how many beaches are in well, Sydney. Connery but it's is, a, you know. It's, like- yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's It's a stupid amount of beautiful beaches that they've they're paying to maintain and all this stuff whereas you could go and live somewhere cheaper without the infrastructure maybe and still have nice beaches you could go move to Fiji and have beautiful beaches but you won't have the westfield just down the road you know yeah so there's always going to be automatic division of class unless things become so easily accessible where you can just have amazon fly you a meal immediately or something with some sort of drone that uses nothing but sunlight, electricity. I don't know. <laughs> then you then maybe. <clears throat> then maybe. I want to go back to Beaming. the um <laughs> I want to go back to the topic of like evolved humans being mm. being less inclined for war, which would be the uh, optim up to a uh optimistic outcome. But at this stage in our life, if you were to take two German boys and drop one off in China and one in Australia, and then at any stage in their life try to, if you got one child from every nation on the planet, set them and and raise them all at the same time with the same same clothing, same treatment, same level of t- discipline and kindness in one place, you're in saying in one place, yeah, in, in an like a like an academy. 
they would all be able to do the same thing. They would all be able to play violin, speak speak certain languages, do this, do that. They they are all able to pole vault, uh, shoot a gun. They'd all be able to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. We're we're still dismissing um, people's born abilities. So you're you're never going to get like talented people, for instance. Talented or not, you can teach someone to play a human being to play a violin. But one of them might be way better at something than the other, even though they're getting the same training. That, so one yeah. of them is going to be bored, and you'll have to advance them quicker than the other one. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but that's the, that's not the point. The, the point's not a the point's not the uh, skill level. The point is the fact that every human being on the planet can learn the same thing. Mm. regardless of whether or not they're interested or not. So that comes down to race can be seen as a silly thing at times because no human being is different to other. But here's where I'm getting at. So if at some point in time we evolve to a point where we're all one color and skin type and we speak the same language, for example, and we're a bit more positive in life and there is pockets of human beings out there that haven't evolved to our level, maybe maybe we're able to maybe we have some kind of telekinetic ability where we can start communicating with our minds because our minds are a bit... Big time. So one thing about humans is we're very egotistical and we are at the top of the food chain. So we've never had... The only people we've really felt inferior against is each other. And it's very petty because, uh, like, as I demonstrated earlier, we are all the same despite where we come from. Mm. So my thing is no matter how kind and polite our evolved versions may be, some of these other human beings who haven't evolved like us will feel inferior. Mm. They may feel like we're being patronizing or that um, even though we've given the rundown of, we've calculated that we think this is the best course of action for you and we're going to assist you, they may see it differently. Mm. So the idea of trying to live in a completely happy, positive world and taking care of those who are as, aren't as fortunate or as evolved of us with us, it would be a lot more difficult than just advising and... Big time. Uh, it'd, be yeah. a, it'd be a fucking... We'd be, we'd be quelling conflicts and wars and... That's why a big point of mine is it, you, you don't know what the time frame is. Mm, because yep. yes, that could be halfway there. You'll still have the people that aren't as evolved... But it depends on what the technology is. Like if we're talking about communicating kinetically or everyone gets a bloody electronic brain implant, we become half a robot, then those people, we're going to have things that will like modify their brain or whatever or send information into the brain. Like I'm talking about if we got to a stage where we're so evolved that ego is no longer a thing that we hang on to as human beings and go, no, I need to protect my ego. Boo, boo, boo. Like, because there is people that are like, like without ego, you know, the people that are like monks or something like that, but not to that extreme. We could still live our normal lives, but not be so bound to our own ego and self-consciousness. So I think that's just a matter of time into the future. It's true. But again, it could go the complete opposite way. Because there's obviously a lot of sci-fi stuff that goes the opposite way where I like this there's, big, there's big armies and we're multi-planetary and then we become very different because people live on a different planet and then they evolve differently again and then it's created a whole sub-race kind of thing. So it could go the complete opposite way. I like focusing, as bad as it sounds, I like, I like attacking the harder topics, like the stuff that we would imagine we would face. Mm. Because if it goes the opposite way, at least there's contingencies planned or mm. at least the discussions and debates would be made. But if it went the other way and, and we're all one and things like that, then fuck, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but I mean, the- imagine, imagine what life would be like. Like, do you think everything would just be too streamlined that we'd be get, we'd become complacent? Well, we would still be searching for something, right? So if we got to a level of intelligence or something, this is what I, this is what I feel like could be a possibility and we're talking like real far ahead weird shit where like we have no idea what death is right and like if we become this thing that becomes so intelligent that we then somehow crack the code of that and we know what our spirits are or whatever this thing is and we become this super intelligence 
it might just be that a human lifespan isn't even a thing anymore, right? We just live this like euphoric thing where we're just seeking more like spiritual power or whatever just it is. A big we're, ball we're, of plasma. Part of the, yeah, we're part of the universe that's just like growing and expanding in this weird intelligent thing. I wonder what kind of things would come out of that. Like, would we would we be able to reach a point where we can create new we can create our own galaxies with our collective thinking? Just yeah. like weird yeah. fucking transcendental weird fucking shit. shit. Like does time even exist anymore? You know, that kind of shit. I but- don't think it'd be good. Like if you could see the finish line and you knew what would happen at the end, I honestly don't think it'd be a positive outcome. As in life wouldn't be good if you yeah, knew like what if, was gonna happen. If you knew like the whole life after death. Death, yeah, death oh, thing. Hundred percent agree. It, it takes away the humanity. It takes away the, um, you know, the trying in life. The, you know, the the hopes and everything. Like I just feel as though it wouldn't be a good outcome. Like, yeah. Or would you want to live in that? If you if if you could see that the future held the ability to see out all the problems that we don't know at this current stage, like nah, life of that'd, you, be, you that'd be crazy, right? Be crazy. Like I can't even fathom having those answers. Here, here's a fun one, Sean. I don't know if we've mentioned this before. But w- time travel, right? Yeah. If one person invented time travel, from that exact moment on, time would no longer exist. Wait, say that again? If one, if you suddenly invented time travel and it was accessible, time would no longer exist because from that point on, you could just travel back in time, find any idea in the past or implant an idea in the past. It would become the present and then you could go to the future and steal ideas and come back to this time. Time would no longer exist. So if someone like tunnels cracks and that, tunnels and well, tunnels of if time. We, we don't know what would happen. We would just be like, we'd probably break the universe or something. Literally. Like it, the way time travel is made in movies, it's fun to think about, but it's not going to work like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it ain't going to work like that. Yeah. Some guy's going to go and get an almanac. And then come back and Marty has to save the day, you know? Yeah. I think I would, you know what would be nice though to that, that um, connecting with the consciousness of God thing that you mentioned. It's like DMT, right? I wish, I wish there was a highly concentrated drug or some kind of natural celestial body that we just have to pass through in a ship and, and like we absorb that, right? And then it may feel like an eternity for us or even like three years and then we come out of it and it's only been two minutes. I would love to do that once. I don't necessarily want to know the future or the end or anything like that. I just want to be part you'd be, of... You'd be completely different if yeah, it was an eternity but, in your brain. Yeah, that, here's the you thing. You wouldn't be Joel anymore. Well, Guaranteed. Well, I wouldn't... Again, I w- I'd want there to be limits to it. Yeah. Like, yeah I'd exactly. like all the... Yeah, but here's the thing. You're going to be the first one to try it? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Imagine this. Uh, imagine coming back. Imagine, like, doing that and then coming, waking up and then walking outside, even, like, right now. How good life would be from that day onwards. Like, I'm not saying I don't want to know if there's a God. I don't want to know the meaning of life or anything like that. I just want to feel some kind of connection with the universe and then when you wake up and you you sit up you're like feel the hard wood beneath your feet the comfort of this chair the smooth fur of a dog you wouldn't even if you felt anxiety or happy or sadness it would feel so good because you'd feel so grounded you'd be like i'm feeling this now and it feels so fucking good to feel like I'm not yeah. this. I'm. I'm. All that emotion is just in one little, one little seed. You know. You, I feel like yours is like a. Um, it would just take away all your fear of the unknown, right? Yeah. So then you could just be present, but it could also end up like Sean's theory, where if you knew what it was, you'd be like, "Why everything is pointless?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really would. Yeah. I can't argue, yeah. Like, <laughs> I know. I was, I, waiting for a, I was waiting for a response. Like, okay, cool. But yours, what yours sounds like, Joel, is like, face. is like... No, no, I had dog fur in my eye. No, I agree. <laughs> I, um, I'm... What yours sounds like is yeah. those people that have the near-death proper near-death experiences yeah. because they come back and they go, oh, it's not as scary as everyone makes it out to be. And then they just like have permission to live their life without this fear and just be like, I can yeah. just do anything. Like... It's part of it's almost like 
you can do anything because it doesn't really matter. But at the same time, it's like, just enjoy what you are doing because that's all that matters is the fact that you're enjoying it in the current moment. Exactly. Yeah. I've always been in that the camp of, um, you know, what was it like before birth? Like we had no, no, <laughs> and, and that's, I've always been in that camp where it's like, I kind of think it, you know, take away religion side of it. Like if it was to be like that, that's how it'd be. Like you'd, you'd have got no recollection of anything. It's just, mm. it is nothing. It is Everything and nothing. <laughs> Everything and nothing. I think I think after like I'm only thirty two years old and like after some days like today where you've just you're tired and you just have this shit to do, like I think after sixty more years of doing this, I'd probably want to just have nothing at the end of the right? road. I'd just be like, let me rest. <laughs> Let me fucking die. Hold me now. That's what I think. I'm six feet down. What's that song? What's that Creed song? Is that Creed? Yeah. How does it go? I don't have no idea. Hold exactly me like that. Yeah. I don't know the next line. But um, da, da. I, I 100% agree with you. I'm like, like, what am I, 33? And I'm sometimes I'm like, I'm fucking exhausted. Like, just in general. Mm, I'm like, yeah. I can't imagine where we'd be like at 83, for instance. <laughs> I was going to be like, oh, man, just just get me the comfiest couch and leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to watch my programs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It makes sense, but we might yeah. we might have a sick life at eighty something. Like we're, we're yeah. Imagine like the old people that are glued to a TV now. When they were our age, that shit didn't exist. So that's we're, like a new technology where they could just engulf themselves. We might have like VR might be so advanced that when we're eighty, we're just going to be wearing VR goggles, just zoned out, just being like, uh, and then out the younger generation then are going to be like, oh, look at this old fart. He's just glued to his VR mm. <laughs> and judging us for that. But then they're going to have their own new technology that they're going to do. It's just a cycle. It's an endless right? cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, imagine just like a big futuristic blimp thing and like crazy things here. Like, do you remember when you were younger? It's always when you were younger, especially like across the road from ours when we were younger, all this house, new houses used to be a big paddock. It was a beautiful, oh, yeah. massive paddock and there was like horses and shit. You could like, if you stood at the gate long enough, a horse would trot up to you and you could feed it, you know? And now they're all houses. And um, That shit still exists. You just got to go further away from the cities. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but we're looking at this now and this is, looks pretty full to us as houses and sand. But in the future, this this will probably seem like emptiness to what what else they may put there. Yeah, yep. So, I always think that when I see a cove like this. So for everyone listening, we're in, in Bronte right now. I'm house sitting in this apartment that literally looks at Bronte Beach. It's phenomenal. But I always think like, what was this when there was nobody here? Like you would just walk through some trees. There'd be shrubs, and you just find this beautiful secluded beach in a little cove. Would have just been like a golden discovery. You'd be like, oh my God, yes. Let's set up camp down there. Yeah. Like shit that you find in like South Stradbroke Island if you go past some rocks and you're like, oh, there's no one on that beach. Let's go. For real. That's why I love seeing those old photos like before and after. Like, oh, so I love that. I was down the, down the Gold Coast the other week and there's this picture and it showed like the surfer's paradise, Kavalav. And it's just like just a family walking through like like the 1920s and it was just all forest. And I'm thinking like, Right where that guy's standing is like where dudes just do tough laps in there, you know, skylines and try to pick it up <laughs> yeah. chicks. Who would have thought like they would have taken a nice leisurely stroll? Yeah, right there. Like, right there. Like, yeah, club. what's going on, love? Okay. <laughs> right there is where some drunk guy king hit another dude. Yeah. And you yeah. know how I know? Because I was one of those assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I killed oh, a guy. Doing, <laughs> doing, doing laps of cavalry. Doing laps, trying to pick up chicks. Which never works. In your Commodore? <laughs> it was my it was my mate's Skyline R33. Oh, so, my, so I wasn't the instigator. I was just the passenger hey, on the ride. But that's that's actually that's actually a legitimate like yeah. That's a legitimate car to do manies in for sure. Yeah, <laughs> manies. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I'd never had that heard that term either until I got here to Sydney. Could they call it manies? I was like, oh, we just call it doing laps of cavil. Yeah, it's doing tough laps. Like <laughs> yeah, tough laps. Where, where where was the generic term? All I knew was Cavill Ave. Manies. <laughs> Doing manies. So or, I guess like the main strip. Yeah, yeah. And you're rolling down there and you're... I mean, the real manies are like the Lambos and the... That's right. You're like, oh, that guy's got money and he needs us to know. Who was the guy we saw last night? So we were walking across to Joel's apartment and um, there was this dude in like a... Like a Is it like one of those like... like 
maybe um, dodges or yeah no for me I, I thought it was a skyline I don't know it was like maybe one of those like been? um are you guys um, both not car guys? No, not at all. <laughs> this is painful to yeah, listen yeah, to. Yeah. Do you know? I'm like, what was it? Do you it know, had wheels and lights. Okay. <laughs> do you know the silver? And it made a loud noise. <laughs> it looked flashy. Do you remember Paul Walker's car in Fast and Furious 2? Two. So like an Evo. <laughs> it looked like that. Yeah. Like a Mitsubishi Evo. Yeah. But um, this chick, we didn't see what happened, but this chick had done something in front of him and he was like honking her and she was just like catatonic in her car and he was like, fuck! Like leaning out the window, and he was like, "Hold me now!" Like screaming at him. Yeah, that Creed fucking blaring. Creed, uh, oh, if so you had, look, if he had Creed blaring, I just thought I don't of, know if you, how much respect you get. <laughs> well, 2001 Creed blaring, no respect. 2024 Creed, yeah, fucking yeah. yeah. I, 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 I thought of a rap line when you when you were mentioning doing tough laps, doing tough laps. With a prostitute who's got tough flaps. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, eh? Good, good one, y'all. Write it down. <laughs> Write That's it down. One hit. <laughs> <laughs> when you say tough Next flaps. That's brown, brown blister mark. That's brown yeah. blister she's mark got, right there. She's got tough flaps because she's copping it all day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Calloused. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, the most vulgar rappers are just like, shit. <laughs> This guy is called yeah. Blister Mike. Or Blister Box at it again. <laughs> Sound it again. It's it's me on like it's me on like the C D cover like like that with like a big burnt like a blister on my hand from like cooking or some shit. I'm like cooking cooking the cooking the decks. Uh, I got an idea. You're you're like this. Yeah. There's blisters all over your hands because you've just dropped the mic because it's on fire. Oh yeah, yeah. There it yeah. is. Yeah. Blister mic. Ah yeah. Spitting fire into that microphone to, <laughs> until you have blisters on your hands. Down the bottom's like in like very small writing, you need like like binoculars. Disclaimer. Range. Disclaimer, it's like formerly known as brown blister mic. Like <laughs> just for those who need to due know. to political reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Figured out his skin was extremely white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mm. get any wider than me, shit. Oh. Especially in Bondi here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Bro, there was like this chick when me and Sean left Woolies, she was like Oh yeah. Like brown, like brown skin, like mahogany brown, gorgeous brunette. She had like a, like a pet, like a tiny little gray skirt and like a, a blouse. Like she had like a schoolgirl uniform. She's probably at least twenty five. Like, Why was she wearing a schoolgirl uniform? No idea, but she, she like Did a, you ask like sophisticated. No, she was walking across the street. She had an umbrella. She stood next to a guy at the lights, and she was like, "Hey, do you want to get under it?" And then he was like, "No, thanks." She was like, "Huh?" And she's just like, "It was like, don't you remember you? Like fireworks are going off in your head when you see this chick. Like, why is she walking in slow motion? Is anyone else seeing this? It was yeah. like that. There yeah. she <laughs> goes. Yeah, there <laughs> she goes. Yeah, she was hot. Eh? In she a parody. Striking. In a parody rom com. <laughs> Why is she walking in slow mo? Yeah, Joel's- <laughs> yeah, just such a such a Joel. See, this is a this is another piece of proof that time doesn't exist. You know, That's Joel right. was just seeing it way slower than everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Have you ever had something happen to you where, like, something that's completely scared the shit out of you, and it's actually happened in slow mo? Yeah. Yeah. Like, wait, wait, wait. Where, where yeah. it's that fearful, where you're like. Something's happening and you're like, fuck. Yeah, it's like your brain just goes in ultra speed and it can just like <laughs> slows time down so you can see everything in picture frame. Like, yeah, it was basically um, car accidents are like that. If you're, yeah. like, you're steer it s- speeding out or if someone throws something at you, you're like, oh, this is going to hurt. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Car accidents are a great example. Like, if you lose control of your car, it's like, mm, you feel like it's ages, but it's probably just like one second of you. Yeah. But you'd be like, <laughs> Ah, so many thoughts. <laughs> the last thought's like, lamb. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> Do you have an example? Uh, well, I remember when we were young, we went to uh, Broom's Head, just like on the kind of like northern New South Wales coast. And uh, there was a sandbar, like maybe, I don't know, a couple of meters out from the actual shore. And um, I'd been bobbing water for a long time. And um, my family like kind of like came out, a while later, swim right past me out to the sandbar and um, you could stand up. So it was basically like shin level where the water was. And anyway, they saw me, they were ushering me over to come over. So 
I didn't realize how long I was out there for. So I started swimming over the sandbar. And then I realized I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really tired. Like I'm actually like just gassing out heaps. Cause like it wasn't a strong kind of current or tide, but it was enough to like, when you've been swimming it for so long that it was just had that much more resistance. And um, you probably remember this. And then, so I was swimming and swimming and my auntie, my mum, and then one of our younger cousins is there. And um, I just remember like, it got to a point where maybe I was like, in my mind, it was maybe two meters away. And I could see them and they're kind of like ushering and still kind of chatting to themselves, not really paying much attention to me. And then it's like, it's almost like time stood still and my, my, my arms just froze. And then I kind of, it's like this really weird thing where it's like, I stopped, looked up and then it's like my body was just slowly just sinking like a brick in the water, you know? Shit. But, um, I just remember like my mom, like my brain just like flashed into his, like, you know, you saw so some people say that they're dying they see their life flash before mm. their eyes. I swear to you, like I could see myself in third person as a toddler growing up to however old, old I was at the time, right up until that point. And then it was just, it was kind of like almost this like peaceful feeling where it's like, I kind of knew what was happening, but I didn't really grasp it. Anyway, I could just feel my hand slowly, almost about to reach just below the surface of the water. And by this stage, I don't know, I've lost my my sense of perspective, like uh, perspective and like how far I was in the shore, but I must've got fairly close to the sandbar. So I've, my hands just reach underneath the, the um, surface of the water and my auntie's actually pulled me up and as she's pulled me up, she's kind of like semi like kind of concentrating on pulling me up, but still talking to mum. And then they're <laughs> like, kind of talking this shit. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you think that the water had pushed you towards them? I, I really don't know, but I got to the, got to the sandbar and I was just coughing and spluttering at this stage. They, they turned to me and actually gave me their full attention saying, hang on, what's, what's going on? They swallowed some water. I told them like, I was, I, th I think I'm, I thought I was drowning. And then like my auntie literally saved, I, well, I'm convinced she saved me to this day, but it was the, it's, it's only happened that one time in my life where I just had this like surreal moment where time just stood absolutely still. And then just had this surreal, you know. It's almost a near death experience right there. I think it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You almost drowned. <laughs> yeah. Shit, son. So. <laughs> Shit, son. That's real. I, I, I um, I feel like as the parents, do you reckon your parents actually knew how traumatic that was for you? Because you're obviously <laughs> just like, you're obviously just like, I almost died, and they were like, oh, Come on, what are you doing? Oh, he swallowed some water. Pat him on the back. He's fine. You're like, I've seen things. <laughs> it's it's funny because yeah, like probably I think because I was so young, and the fact that I I how didn't... how young are we talking? Oh. Maybe seven or eight. Right. So, yeah, like, okay. was, so very young. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like I was old enough to, you know, obviously be out by myself kind of waiting mm. water, but not old enough that I, I didn't grasp the situation. And like, I don't know if it left a, like some impression on me, but I've never, it, like, it wasn't like I was scared to get back in the water the next day. I'm pretty sure we spent the rest of the holiday back in, in the, the water, same spot. Yeah. But uh, it was a surreal experience and it left like an impact on me knowing that I'm just like, you yeah. know. Time can stand Time still. Time can stand <laughs> still. Like it's amazing like when the brain's put under that kind of like under that pressure. What it does. What it does. Yeah. A, it's, water scares the shit out of me like in terms of when I have kids. That shit's like I'm going to be like a hawk. Like mm. that shit's scary as fuck. So um, um, have you met Jeremy, one of our mates from school? So he's he's got two kids now and he was at this – like family dinner thing and there was a pool there and his younger one, um, he wasn't wearing his floaties. floaties for some reason. And I don't know, maybe someone else opened the gate or something and they were like playing inside the gated area and he falls in and Jeremy's like on the other side of the table. We got to get him to tell this story when he comes on one day, but he's on the other side of the table and like he sees this and he just describes it as like, he just, he just like... It's almost like when you see red and you get super angry, but the opposite where it was just like, well, like laser focus. And he's like, I don't know how I was that nimble, but I was over, like jumped over that pool fence so freaking quickly yeah. in the water and pulled him Jeremy's out. Jeremy's a heavy dude. dude. Yeah. He's like, like 130 he's, he's kgs. Like, yeah. He's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, something like that. Yeah, so he's just... Poof! <laughs> like just launched himself over this to pull like, the kid out. He's like, there's like a table in front of him with the people there. He's like, like 
hulks people he's, out of the way. He's got, he's, got, he's got his son in his hand. He looks over the tables just in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and just ran yeah, through it. And he just went straight through the table. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. How, like that scares the shit out of me because yeah. – my my parents tell stories of like even us because we would used to go to this um uh indoor swimming pool in Germany because they have like they have a lot of them there these big indoor ones because obviously winter is freaking cold and there's like a bit of an outdoor area and then they got like these strong jets that turn on in like time intervals and you can stand there and get like a massage and stuff so me as a kid I used to play in those jets and they were strong and then mum I think was like on her way to go up to the sauna. And it was like this big pool with like a little bridge over like some paths. So I'm playing in this jet and I've obviously let go of the edge. And dad, this is when my sister was really young. So dad's like, like with my sister, like, oh yeah, in the water, you know, make sure playing with her in the water and he's back to me. So I'm like in this jet and I'm like, and I don't remember this. So I must've been pretty young, but I'm there off the edge like basically about to drown, don't have the memory that you have, but apparently mum was like walking to the sauna and sees this, sees me like, (laughs) dad like looking the other way. She was like, same thing, just like dive in the water, pull me out. And then that same pool, there's another story where they had like on one of the edges, they had these spas, but you'd be up in in the hot spa and you could like jump down into the bigger pool cold water it was like probably like a a meter drop or something and i was playing down there and then my sister decided she would jump off as well and she couldn't swim properly yet so same like how sort. old were you guys I, I i reckon i was probably five and she would have been like three or something like Just super young young, young. yeah but yeah that's mum tells this story and she's like yeah you definitely saved jackie that day because like she jumped in she was a bit like Bleh! and i was like oh what's going on like <laughs> what are you doing silly billy like, I thought nothing of it, but mum would have been like, ah, you saved her. <laughs> yeah, <was> like, okay. <laughs> Fuck. But what a scary man. Kids just die. It is. It's fucked. You get yeah. so complacent in water, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, we're, we're at the Bondi, in front of the Bondi Beach right now, and you look out it and you're Bronte. just like, Bronte, sorry. Mm. But you look out of the beach right now, and like so many like tourists come here. Just thinking it's like the water's back home, you know? Like they don't have like the rips and stuff they do here. And it's just... Well, most people that drown here are not local. I know, yeah. It's it's wild. That's it's, such a fucked up... Sorry, go on. Yeah, it's, it, I'm just saying it's dangerous How if you f- don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. Hearing hearing that a loved one of yours has passed away in your own countries, that's obviously the, the be all end all of fucked. But imagine like... On a holiday. A holiday. Mm. And, a, and a beach of all things. Like if I found out that, like if I had children and I found out one of them in his 20s or whatever. Uh, went on a holiday. In, went on safari in Africa and defended like a, a, a group of uh, uh, tourists against a lion and got eaten by a lion. I'd be like, that was pretty badass. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but you've just created a very badass, yeah, yeah, yeah. cool story there. Where it's like, exactly. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I'm, let me yeah, make yeah, my. Okay, okay, let me sorry, make, sorry. I'm, I'm making walking my, all over it. I'm making my comparison, and then you go from that ideal, not <laughs> ideal, but ideal to <laughs> the most ideal death yeah, of your child yeah, you could have. To <laughs> oh, your son died in uh, at Morocco because he drank too much Bacardi and. and and drowned in the ocean. Tried to swim in the ocean, yeah. He'd be like, I told you to go on safari. <laughs> <laughs> <Motherfucker>. <laughs> okay, I was wondering where you were going with that. I'm yeah. like, Joel, that's a really cool story. I thought we were talking about tragedies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, got, you gotta let me you gotta let me work. Oh my god. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta let me, you gotta let me finish it. <laughs> Get to the punchline. That would suck. It. Do you know anyone do you know of anyone who's been carked at overseas? No, I don't know anyone personally. I don't think those stories of people in mexico with those cartels are fucked mm. aren't you getting shot up in mexico the, the, oh yeah i read one what just recently the two australian uh, brothers from perth that um yeah. went missing and they found the bodies burnt or something oh, is that god no i didn't even burnt? read that oh, I, don't, one. I don't want to just fact check that but this well this one was like real fucked up it was like, like a dude and his girlfriend went missing and then as they were driving back across the border, like they're obviously trying to look for her and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, fuck, we got to go. Like we got to go back to, I think they were driving obviously back to the States. And as they're driving, there's those big lineups at the borders. 
and they see his girlfriend in the back of this car. Oh, yeah. With yeah. all these gangsters in it. Oh, yep. And obviously they, like, point that out to the guards and then they rush the car and she'd been fucking murdered, gutted, and was just filled with drugs and it was just her dead body there. Good grief. I wonder if she Fucked. was, like, deathly pale. Like, because she would have had, right? like, like, would they have had I'm to, assuming like... she would have been, like, all dressed and yeah. hat on maybe, but... I wonder, how, like, like do they do they cover the body in ammonia to, like, stop the, the fucking... Bloating and the... Uh, yeah. And the the necr- necr- necrosis and shit, like, yeah. Ugh. Oh, man. Hold me now. Six something. You, you, you almost like wouldn't want to be there to discover it. You'd, no. You just want to hear about it. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? I'd hope the next thing, if I saw that and I was there, I would just pray there was a bunch of those Sicario dudes around who would just fucking go, 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 spray well, that car. The, well, apparently they dead. like stopped the car and like stopped that from getting across because they obviously discovered her with drugs inside of her. But mm. how fucked? Do you remember that? Like it wouldn't scene? have been a shootout. Like that was a. Sick scene, yeah, <laughs> and like that shit escalated so quickly. You're like, Paisanos, yeah, and like shit that you would never expect. They're like, there's a car there and there, like three cars back, and you're like, oh okay, what's what's the big deal? Next minute, shoot out at the border, yeah, yeah. fuck, bro, fuck Mexico. I'm never going to Mexico. <laughs> it's not just Mexico though. Yeah, it's all these places that we don't even hear about. Exactly. That shit goes on. The pen, the like the. <laughs> The dynamics of power that we can't even fathom because we're in this cushy Western society. Yeah. Like the way people display power over there <laughs> is fucking disgusting. They'll just grab randoms and chop their heads off and hang their bodies from a bridge just to display like, don't fuck with us. Like, do what we say. Mm. Like, okay, yeah, I don't want my headless corpse hanging off a bridge, so I'll do what you say. Cheers. Yeah. It's crazy, like, different places in the world that grew up in different environments and hardships that's like the product of it. You know what I mean? Like people that it's like the morals are just wiped out yeah. of their, of their, of, of who and they you are. Think about it. That's a country. You can still go into a store and buy a Coca-Cola. I know. Just They're normal. still drinking the same shit as us. <laughs> They're yeah. still drinking ginger beer and seltzers. That's crazy. How like the scope of Coca-Cola's reach is Anything. like, they're they can like, probably buy seltzers. Rain, hail, or shine, we will provide our substance for you. <laughs> we are the overlords of this world, filling your body with sugary waste, you know? Like Coca-Cola infiltrated <laughs> the third, the fourth world, not third world <laughs> countries, the fourth world. Just, say, say, Satan's probably slurping on a fucking Coca-Cola down there, downstairs. Probably. Oh, shit. What if he's slurping on a Pepsi Max? Though? I wonder if aliens <laughs> came down. Yeah. I wonder if aliens came down and like took a lot of our samples. Cause like they, if aliens, we all know aliens are real, but they would have looked at like, okay, humans worship this idol, this Christ. And then there's, uh, they also worship this other thing, Coca-Cola. And then <laughs> yeah. they worship this thing, um, Ferrari. So they would have had samples of everything that we hold dear. And I wonder if they sipped Coca-Cola and were like, ew. Or they like <laughs> it. would be crazy. Now, now yeah. you've got Coca-Cola on the side of the alien ship. Our, like, corporations, our yeah. corporations would look like gods to outsiders, right? Because yeah, we're much. all just like, oh, we need a- False idols. <laughs> Let me buy this. <laughs> Here, take some of my precious, precious earned money so I can... Sip on your liquid. Yeah, yeah. Here's another fun fact. I'll have two fun facts Ooh. for you. I'll, I'll do your one, Sean, because we're sitting at Bronte looking at the beach. It's May, and apparently April and May, in Australia this is obviously, April and May has the warmest ocean water. So if we went for a swim right now, it's what, 18 degrees outside and 16, raining? 16, I think. So I think the water would be like 23-ish degrees. So it would feel warm, and then we'd come out and feel cold in the in the air rather than in the water. That's nuts. Crazy. So you could jump into the ocean to warm up right now, technically. I wish I bought some boardies. Eh? I probably yeah. would have done it. <laughs> Let's do it. I got some spare boardies for you. Do <laughs> <laughs> Just give him the speedos. Yeah. yeah. He'd love that. I would. Just be the whitest guy on the beach. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, like blend, at the moment. I'm like blending in with the sand, hey? But here's the second fun fact about Coca-Cola. Do you know how Coca-Cola came about? Cocaine? Cocaine, yeah. Correct, but 
It was first a company that did cocaine wine. Because apparently that was a thing way back in the day. Dude, I'm pretty sure cocaine you told wine. this. I'm pretty sure you told this like the first episode. Really? Of the podcast. I think Probably. This is like, I haven't yeah. heard it though. That's it. It's a treat for everyone. Yeah. So yeah. yeah give cocaine Sean wine on. was a thing. Then the alcohol prohibition happened. So the company went, well, we can't put cocaine in wine. So we'll create another liquid and use the cocaine and make this delicious sugary liquid. Oh. Coca-Cola was born, and then cocaine became illegal, so then they had to make a substitute and take the cocaine out of it, and now we have the Coke that we drink today. Bro, so I would, originally start yeah. off as wine. <laughs> yeah. Mario. And then they had to take the wine out because wine was illegal before cocaine. Dumb! I would love, I would love to go back in time and, and have a scientist sample the old Coke to, to tell how many grams of Coke is in it. I would love and I'd to also sample love to... old anything. Yeah. Anything that's evolved, that's a product that we consume now. Imagine having the first one of it. Bro, honey mead, like Viking mead. It would taste I, so different. I'd, I'd love to go back to ancient Egypt and taste the beer that they used to make. It probably tastes like fucking dog piss. Piss, exactly. Piss. It would probably smell piss. like dog piss. Mule's piss. Mule's piss. Yeah. Mule's piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how wild is that? Oh. Like started with cocaine wine. That's so cool. And then, yeah. and look, this isn't fact checked by myself, but I heard that apparently Coca Cola still has like one of like has a license or something. I don't know what the laws are, but they can they still have the biggest production of growing coca plants. So the cocaine plant, but they use it for the Coca-Cola and don't use the part that makes you high. Wow. So imagine wild. if that becomes legal. I'm, I'm they're gonna piss, gonna be going to be cashing in. Oh, <laughs> like not that they're already, keep not on. that they're not one of the biggest corporations in the world already, but they just be like, oh, well, the cocaine's legal now. We've got this in giant fields of coca plants. Let's get it. Could you imagine if that kind of Coca-Cola was available today? Man, you'd have stacks of it at home. Like really Beautiful. It probably would have been phenomenal because it wouldn't have been like, a, I assume it wouldn't have been a lot of cocaine. So it's not like, oh, let's snort some lines and get real high. It yeah. just would have been like a really good feeling. Like you would have just been like, this is a, and imagine it with wine. I yeah, know. <laughs> the warm face of the wine and then the, I feel like the king of the world it's of the double, coke. What the fuck? <laughs> it's a double pleasure. You know, you're getting the, you're getting the ethanol hit and you're getting the coke hit. Like, exactly. Fucking that'd be awesome. It'd be wild. I can't believe it started off with wine. That's mm. Coca wine. Coca wine. I could have gone that completely wrong, but that's how I read it. <laughs> that's that's wild. But to, Coca wine definitely was a thing, though. Like pretty common thing. Yeah, we reckon it would have been in a red one or a white one, or wouldn't have had. I think just, red. I think. Oh, I didn't even think. You know, that. like with what they, was it? I, I'm assuming. I just assumed red because I'm a red drinker, but that's probably yeah. just my own bias kicking in. Yeah. But, so I think I know this because I read, um, I read a book about the drug pro prohibition called Follow the Scream. Really good book because it basically points out the ridiculousness of the uh, prohibited drugs and like the world that we live in today and then points out like studies of Switzerland, for instance, where they're basically decriminalized and anyone that has an addiction to a illegal substance can just go to like heroin. They have heroin centers in Switzerland where if you're an addict, you can go there and they'll give you your clean hit of heroin. They've got little cubicles where you do it. And the people that go in there are apparently like some of them like business people, successful jobs. They rock up in their suits, have their hit. And then get on with their life. Like they're high functioning people, but they've admitted they're addicts. And then if you go in there and you go, well, I don't want to be addicted to the substance, then they just send you upstairs and that's where you can wean off it. So they give you the shit that helps you wean off it. So like, it's all very much like, hey, you have a problem. Let's help you with that rather than being like, you're a fucking criminal because you bought dirty heroin on the streets and now yeah. your arms are all fucked up because it's mixed with fucking concrete powder and all this <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. So it compares that and then 
does the comparisons to the alcohol prohibition because that only lasted for, I think, maybe 10 years or something. Jeez, I don't even think it was that long. 10 I years. Yeah, no, you're right. I think it was 1926 to 1933. Yep. So not even 10 years. Really? I thought it was only two or three years. I didn't realize it was that no, long. No, it was pretty long. But the, the issues they had during that were way more deaths from alcohol because people, people were having to get it illegally. Yeah. And what do you do when you have to illegally smuggle a substance? You make it as potent as possible so that you can only it right and- so that you can only you can import it in small amounts and ha- get the most amount of profit. So you'd sell really moonshine. Yeah. That's how moonshine was born. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so you'd sell like this moonshine shit. It's where Canadian Club came and from. And it was like poison. And people were just dying because they're drinking this highly concentrated alcohol. And then they were like, oh, well, this isn't working. Let's make it legal again. Cr- crazy pneumonia, all this other crazy shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I got, I think I figured out the problem, one of the major problems with heroin and why it's still so prevalent today. It's because it's, it's illegal. It's because it's got the word win in it. <laughs> Call it hero lose. You're absolutely right. Could be honest. I never man. thought of that. So that's how people get into it, eh? Change these fucking names. Like <laughs> Pablo Francisco, for instance, has a skit, <laughs> right? Where he's like, he's like, who the fuck are naming these goddamn hurricanes, right? Nobody's intimidated by Hurricane Katrina. He's like, oh, Katrina coming? Fuck that bitch. He's like, they need to make the names more intimidating. Like Hurricane Scorpio. <laughs> oh, shit. Scorpio's coming, man. We go. Imagine like, imagine if they changed cigarettes to fucking... Corpse sticks, or they changed heroin to um to to like flesh eater, flesh eater virus, or something mm. fucking gangster like that. You're not touching that shit. Like yeah. let's get let's get down to brass tacks. But it's 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 funny though because like that doesn't deter people. All right, let's let's take alcohol for example because like alcohol gets like defended by everyone when it it kind of really shouldn't. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's but the people that defend it can also logically give you an extremely bad rap of the substance. That's right, yeah. Like, us, for instance, we could be like, I love beer. No way. We we love our beer. Yeah. But then at the same time, we can be like, alcohol is really bad. Like, it ruins lives. Yeah. Like, we can have this double standard where we're like, oh, yeah, we'll just accept that it's, 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 it's all good. It's the socially acceptable drug. Yep. But then you can literally, <laughs> one of the, one of the facts that blows my mind is that alcohol just happens to be the only substance, drug, that you can die from if you cold turkey quit. Yeah. The only. You can cold turkey quit heroin, you'll have a bad time, but you will not die. Whereas if you're a full-blown alcoholic that has alcohol every single day and you've always got a blood percentage alcohol in your blood, and you go cold turkey, you can die. Hard out. I wonder if you were lying there gasping for air and then someone came over and poured a bit of scotch down your throat. You'd be like, ah, do you think (laughs) you'd survive? Who knows? Like you have to wean off or they put you on other shit that I'm pretty sure that will help you not die from going cold turkey with booze. That's right. It's fucking wild, but that's the socially acceptable one. And unless you're a crazy alcoholic, you know, alcohol is sneaky. It plays the long game, you know what I mean? Because... You know, you could be what we deem in Australia as like a, maybe a casual drinker, you know, might have like a Friday night sesh or Saturday night, wind it down of a couple beers on Sunday, you know, watching game. But it's doing like immense damage in a slow trajectory, you know what I mean? Like because alcohol is the only thing that can cross the blood-brain barrier. Totally wipes out cells. Like it does more than liver and kidney damage, and, and just, but it's so good. You know, this is Sean, and, ladies and gentlemen. He did, he hasn't been he hasn't had a drink in two and a half years now. What is it? No, like it'll be a year and two weeks. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah, a year and two. So weeks. I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm on that bandwagon. But I'm not shitting on alcohol. Like I still. I yeah, you're doing it. it for personal reasons. I'm doing it for personal respect. reasons. But I love it. Like it's one of my favorite things in the world is drinking. You know, I love the culture of it. I love. Yeah. Two weeks, everything. bro. That's huge. That's a big deal. But that's two weeks. It will be a year without alcohol. That's yeah. a big deal for an Australian in particular. That's excellent. Yeah. But that's like, that's the thing, right? It creates a culture. And I think this is my own theory. I have no data to back this up, but I think this is potentially because it can be consumed at such a slow, controllable rate 
That's right, yeah. So because you can just have a drink and it's a beer and it's only 5% of it is alcohol, so then you only feel a tiny effect. Then you have another beer and it can be very slowly consumed. Whereas other drugs... That's why cigarettes and beer go hand in hand. That's the same thing. Cigarettes are the same thing, bro. But it may be because other drugs are illegal. So you have to get it in concentrated form. Yeah. Whereas... For instance, let's take cocaine as an example. If cocaine was legal, you would probably buy it in like, I don't know, cocaine wine, cocaine gummies, where it's a very small amount. So you have a gummy, you feel a little bit of a buzz. You're like, oh, this feels nice. You have another gummy and you'd have to have a ton to actually feel fucked up. Whereas because it's illegal, we have to put it in the smallest package so we can smuggle it across borders and then sell it in powder. And then obviously the locals that sell it will cut the powder so that they make more money and then you're getting dirty shit. Exactly. It's all fucked up. Mm, yep. If and that shit was legal, it would be much more controlled. I mean, I'm not saying that it would solve all problems because it's probably going to still ruin lives and people are going to have a hissy fit about it, but it's ruining lives already. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, you know, they test pills at festivals and stuff like that, you know, for that very reason, like gets cut with fentanyl. Like the fact that they haven't legalized it is that, making it more dangerous, you know? That shit is bullshit to me. Like, if you're going to make it... I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Testing pills, great. Will stop people from dying. But just, if you're going to go that far, just go one step further and be like, okay, if you want a party drug, let's legalize it and let's make sure we're putting the clean substance out there. Exactly. And let's make sure we're selling it in a dose that's not going to fuck you up. Yeah, the festival's like, we'll be your drug dealers. You don't yeah. have to worry. <laughs> Come buy from us. Like, yeah. But but you could still make it, like, there's always going to be a black market for people that want more. But let's say it was done like uh, pseudoephrogen in a cold and flu. When I have a fucking cold and I want to quickly dry out my fucking sniffles, I'll go get original cold and flus with pseudoephrogen in it. They take your license, they put your license number in the system so that you can't go to the next chemist and buy another box. So they're tracking how much you buy. If you did that shit the exact same way with those controlled drugs, you could go to a drug store and buy yourself some, I don't know, cocaine in like a safe way. And then they'll put your details down. They'll be like, this guy just bought some cocaine. So you can't go and buy a ton more and get fucked up on it and wreck yourself. Yeah, it's regulated. Like you should really, realistically... It should be done for booze, but the problem with booze is it's so shareable, right? You're going to go buy a bottle of whiskey. It doesn't mean you're going to go sink that bottle of whiskey that night. It means you might put it in a in a silly whiskey cask <laughs> like that, <laughs> or you're going to share it with all your mates. Yeah. So, like, there's no way of telling what's going to be done with the substance, but if you just go, okay. I don't know. It's my opinion on drugs. Mm. Yeah, no, you make a good point. I just, yeah. And another point, to the point of the stereotype of heroin addict, that they're all fucked up and they got scabs all over them and their arms are all fucked up, that's not the heroin doing that. It's not the actual... Um, is it? Is it like lack of eating and sleeping? No, it's the dirty shit that's being sold. Being mixed in with it? Yeah, so literally there's been... Uh, this is probably not as common as I'm making it sound, but there's literally been like... Heroin where they test it and they've mixed it with literally concrete powder. So you're injecting Fuck. liquid concrete powder into your veins and you're like, oh, why am I getting all fucked up? It's messed up. So if that was just pure... I've lost the word. What's what's heroin? What's endone? Heroluz. It's... um. Sorry, heroluz. <clears throat> endone. What are they? Opioids. Opioids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if it was just clean opioids that you were injecting you would never get the symptoms that we see as a traditional heroin addict. When people used to chase the dragon, like the old opium dens the Chinese had back in early America, I wonder how, because you'd smoke the pipe, I w that would have been pure, <coughs> surely. That wouldn't have had anything in it. So mm. I wonder how easy those people were able to bounce back afterwards, you know? Yeah, there's people out there. There's another guy that wrote a book, um, you Can't. Swiss are uh, Dewo? No, it's he's um he's a scientist and he wrote a book called Drug Use for Adults, I think it's called. I'd have to check that, but Drug Use for Adults. And he's a scientist that studies drugs 
and he has done every single drug like that gets around recreationally and illegally and the the whole stigma about oh you do heroin once you're going to be addicted it's it's all bullshit it obviously depends on set and setting and personality but that is what they found <clears throat> one interesting study is rats so they put rats if you put a rat in solitary confinement in a shitty little square box uh, where all it's got is food that it needs and then you put two water dispensers in, one has opioids in it, one's just straight water, the the rat will drink the opioid and go, oh man, I feel fucking sick, I feel high and it will get fucked up on the opioids. If you then put a rat and you get 10 more rats and you put them in what they call rat paradise, and you got shit to climb, you got things to play with, you got tunnels to dig, you got shit to do, and you put the same two water bottles in, they don't go for the opioid bottle. They drink the clean water because they're happy. So a lot of it has to do with set and setting. You're fucked up, you don't have a job, you want to forget about your life, you need to get high, you're buying heroin. And prime example of almost like a human study was the Vietnam War. A bunch of the American soldiers got hooked on heroin, on opioids over in Vietnam because of the dire situations. They were all fucked up. And like, it was like 90 something percent of them. As soon as they got back, they had no issues coming off it. So all this stigma about, Oh my God, you're going to go through these crazy withdrawals and you're going to, your life's going to be ruined. Not really the case when you look at the data. Hey, I got a, I got a joke for you. <laughs> Tell me. What do you call a uh, a guy with no shins? No shins. None of these right here. No shins. <laughs> what do you call him? Tony. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call a guy with a shovel on his head? Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so lame. Oh, so lame. What about, good. What's the one that you read on the? You laugh, you lose. What? Um, what do you call, do you a, man call a guy with a, with a rubber toe? toe? <laughs> Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, that's well, gentlemen. Mm. I think I think we'll, we'll call it on that. Absolutely. Hair lose. <clears throat> And drink it all. Rename it. Yeah, what have what have you been doing, Sean? Uh, eating lollies. <laughs> eating lollies. I'm so full of sugar right now. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> all right, thanks everyone for listening, and thanks Sean for being another wonderful guest. Thanks, lads. Uh...